Hi, thank you for coming back. This is part two of the introduction to CarSim. In the first part, we saw features that no matter what you're using CarSim for, you will use. You'll use the visualizer, you'll set up new runs, you'll use the database. In this part, we'll be looking at things that some will be must-have features for some of you, and others will never touch them. So we'll call these advanced features. As we see from the title, CarSim includes trailers. We can have one axle trailers, two axle trailers, or three axle trailers. And we have payloads. The payloads can be put on a trailer or on the lead unit. And we can have up to 99 of them. Here's what a, uh, a utility vehicle towing a trailer with one payload looks like when it goes over a railroad crossing. The default is that most wheels have single tires, but dual tires are available. CarSim has a robust steering controller that looks at a preview distance along a prescribed path and steers to follow it. You've seen that it works forward even at race speeds and it also works backward. Here's a slightly speeded up uh, simulation of the truck doing a double lane change. The little green ball there is showing a preview point that the steering controller is following. Here is an example of a three-way turn going forwards following the ball forward. Now in reverse the ball is behind the driver model still steers, and now for the third part the ball jumps to the front so the car will go forward. We have a docking maneuver with a trailer. Now we are using the steer controller to follow the ball there, but we're also using VS commands to extend the model. VS commands were originally put in to automate uh, test procedures like bring the vehicle to a speed, do something, bring it to another speed, do something. But now we use it extensively uh, to support ADAS scenarios such as this one where we have a sensor on board the vehicle that is detecting the pedestrians, the bicyclists, and the signs and making uh, responses accordingly. So let's see how we extend the model with VS commands. This is how they appear in the echo file. Uh, the commands are all in blue, so define parameter is a, is a VS command, define variable, define output, define a new function, and adding equations during the initialization, each time step at the output. And then the last one here is uh, define event. We've got a, a conditional expression here, which is either zero or not zero. And if it is not zero, then this path name is loaded. The way that appears in the GUI is like this. If type near equals stop sign, then load the parse file that's with the link here. If that's not uh, if that's not triggered, the next one is that if type near is a speed sign, then load this parse file, and so on for the third one. Each time an event is triggered, the new data set will set up a change in the behavior of the vehicle, like a new target speed. So it will come to a stop at the stop sign, or it will stay at rest to wait for pedestrians to clear, or it will accelerate, or it will change paths that it's, the steering model is going to follow. CarSim supports up to 200 target objects and up to 99 ADAS sensors. Typically in our, simula in our animations here we show detections from different sensors with different colored beams going to the nearest point on a target object. The shape of a target object can be chosen from uh, four types here. It can be a cylinder, a rectangle, a segment, which is what we use for road signs, or polygonal. The shape is important because it determines where the closest point is, where the left edge is, where the right edge is, and how the object occludes other shapes. Sometimes it is necessary to include realistic 3D models of intersections and complicated road designs. We can do this in CarSim with no external software by adding together up to 200 independent road surfaces. Here is the uh, roundabout. It has a circle road and four access roads that come in and go out. They're all assembled so that the tires go seamlessly from one road to the other as they cross the connecting lines. 3D ground surface is sometimes available from 3D files made from third-party software such as FBX and OBJ format supported by 3DS Max, a modeling software package, OpenDrive, and the Unreal Engine. These 3D assets use a mesh of points to represent a surface. We make this available in a format called VS Terrain that gives a high efficiency mesh representation and we have a utility to import data from other formats into it. 
CarSim includes a tool called the VS Scene Builder that we use to build uh, scenarios, the backgrounds. It has tiles that can be moved over and selected, uh, combined to build a background. Each tile has terrain with it. The terrain for the whole collection there is automatically merged together. And it has a neat path builder where you can see little arrows on the screen and uh, click on them, go along and add a path as needed. So this one already had uh, six paths in it. We'll use that in an example. So we have the car going through the intersection that was just created in Scene Builder using lights that were added as objects because they're, uh, sensed by, they can be sensed by our sensors and having the pedestrian being a moving object that is in here. Another alternative to get road information into CarSim is to get the data from mapping services such as Google Map. This is using a tool called atlas.carsim.com where we look at the navigation interface uh, to pick a start and stop point, but instead of getting directions, we'll download GPS coordinates, latitude, longitude, and altitude. Bring that into CarSim and we'll get a CarSim path with an associated road surface. We'll continue to get the exit road that uh, goes onto the local road, download that, bring it in, and then we'll go get the third part, which is the local road all by itself. Jiggle it around a little bit, get that information, and now we have enough information to have the complete interchange with all three sections. Now there's an issue, which is that the coordinates are good for navigation, but they're not so good for hi-fi uh, vehicle dynamic simulation. The problem is an overpass is you only get one z-coordinate, so it's either going to be for the underroad or the overroad. But luckily, we've got the data now, and we can edit it. We can remove bad points. And we've also got uh, smoothing capabilities in here. Several filters are available. So we smooth the data, and then we can go back. And uh, after spending a little bit more time, we look at it, and we have something that's physically feasible. And then we can pretty it up so it looks something like the actual intersection. So far, everything we've seen is completely using CarSim. Now we'll look at some external tools. CarSim includes a few hundred import variables, variables that may be imported. That's pretty much every force and moment and control that you might want to bring in from outside. It also has thousands of variables that can be exported to other software. So in running with external software, we typically pick a set of import variables and a set of export variables to work with uh, the other software. This is an example using Simulink with an ABS controller in the Simulink model, getting the wheel speeds from CarSim and applying the line pressures to the brakes. We have a library of S functions that come with the software, so you drag the S function in there, it connects with the solver, and then you run in uh, Simulink as you would with any other kind of model. The results can be viewed and plotted the same as if they were built in. In addition to Simulink, CarSim includes an interface to LabVIEW from National Instruments and other interfaces, notably a number of real-time ones such as DSpace, National Instruments, and Concurrent. A generic option is to use functional mock-up interface and have the software make a functional mock-up unit, an FMU, when set up that way. The FMU is a file that can then be brought into the external workspace. The Unreal Engine is a game engine developed by Epic Games, originally for first-person shooter games. It is now used in a variety of other genres, including simulation environments, such as CarSim. Here, CarSim is running in the Unreal Engine, along with Simulink, uh, which is accomplished by having another product, VS Connect, that allows Unreal and Simulink to communicate as the run proceeds. Traditionally, CarSim has a simulation with one vehicle in it. It might have multiple roads and multiple moving objects and sensors, but there's just one vehicle. Starting with 2020.1, which is released in June 2020, that's no longer the case. You can have up to four vehicles in it. Here's an example that is using the same urban intersection we made with Scene Builder. Now here are the events, 
and we're using a feature that was added in this release uh, that there's a checkbox up here to say which vehicle. That means when we specify the throttle here, it's being applied to vehicle 3 and any other kinds of settings that are in here go to vehicle 3. So we'll look at the echo file for this example. These are the events we had down there. They're in groups, so these are three events that are pending at the start of the run for vehicle 1. These are the ones that we just looked at for vehicle 3 and we've got them for the other two vehicles. Now here is the setup screen for the run with four vehicles. You see the code up here instead of being II, it's II space, II space, and so on. It's a generic uh, data set that we put in here. There's another way to do this that we introduced in the previous release, 2020.0, and that is to use parallel solvers. In this case, each of the uh, we have each of the vehicles is represented with a full run control data set. So we have the vehicle up here linked in the conventional way, a procedure for it linked in the conventional way. We have the 3D road for the intersection. To make this work, we have to run under the control of external software. Uh, we click the button to open the model in Simulink, and we have four guys here. Each one is using a new block that we introduced in the last release that uh, accommodates having parallel processors. We run it in Simulink, and this is speeded up uh, times four, so it won't take as long. Now, speaking of speed, one of the things I should mention is that this capability is provided for some of our real-time systems. So you can do multiple vehicles while running on, say, Scalexio. To view plots or videos from this screen, click the P or V button. And we see that running four parallel solvers gives pretty much the same result as running four vehicles within one solver. And that concludes our introduction to CarSim. Thanks for watching.